Hello everyone! Version 3 of GUM code-only visuals were released in November, and they simplify styling on forms controls. GUM styling is now so much easier. If you're an existing user of the GUM tool, we'll talk about how to upgrade at the end of the video, but for now, let's take a look at how you can do some styling with version 3. First version 3 style example, let's change a button's background directly to red. With this background color property, you can set that directly to red. You'll notice that I use the background color and not background dot color here. With the V3 visuals, because I've set the background color property to red, when I click and do any action on the button, those actions are going to be tinted appropriately. However, if we were to make this background dot color, it still appears correct until you try to interact with it. So now with that background color property, so background color, not background dot color, with that property existing, you can change the button's complete color and its tints for highlighting, clicking, disabled, etc. Here I've changed it to green so you can see the highlight functionality exists. It was hard to see on the red. Another way that you can change the color of a button is to change the active style's primary color, as I've done here. The benefit with doing it this way is that it applies to all the forms controls, not just the button. So any future control that's created after we set this will have a green primary color. Here, I'll add another radio button to my list, and then when I run this, I now have this radio button also behaving and responding to the primary color in the active style. Let's use the foreground color to change the text color for this button. I've changed it to red, and as you can see, it now stays red on all of the different states of this button. Whereas again, if I was to change the text's color directly, what you would notice is that it would change when I tried to change the different states, highlighted, pushed, disabled. So in this situation, it appears like I have changed the color, but the moment that I change the current state by moving the mouse over it or clicking on it, we notice that it reverts back to the actual state's colors. And that's the reason why you would use foreground color instead of text instance.color. We can go further. Let's build our own custom style for your game. You could use this style and it would apply to all of your controls after you've defined it. So to do that, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to create a new styling object. You need to pass in a sprite sheet. We're just going to cheat and we're going to use the existing sprite sheet that's on the active style right now. We also want the defaults to get set up, so we're passing true. Next, we're going to set a bunch of the colors primary, input, background, text primary, the accent color. We're just going to change those values. I'm also going to change something called percent darken, which is a, a property that you can change that will change the functionality of how the styles are applied when a color exists. By default, it makes it 15% darker when you say click the button. But with this change, it's going to make it 50% darker when you click on the button. The last thing we need to do is we need to change the active style to our style we just built. With all of that in place and the button created and added to the stack panel, and the stack panel added to the root, now we can see that this button exists, the color format that I've defined in the styling exists, and those are applied to all future controls that are built. So this is the way that you would want to build up your styling for your level, for your screen, for your specific control. And you can create multiple instances of the styling object, store them, and then utilize them only on the objects you need. And just going back to whatever default style there is, save that off first. All right, this next styling item is specifically how you can change the sprite sheet 
to your own texture. If you want to utilize the default styling, so you want to utilize the default functionality of the, the icons and the checkbox pictures, things like that, but you wanted to modify some of that so that it looks a different way, you can do that pretty simply. This allows you to make your own borders, as I've done here, or maybe you want the checkbox to be an X instead of a check. There is a default template that you can use, and this template will have a bunch of different icons and borders that you can modify to make it your own style. I've got the sprite sheet up here. This is the one that is actually used whenever you are using gum in code only or in forms. You just don't usually see it in code only. I'll provide a link to it. Up at the top in the corner here, we can see how I've modified the borders of some of these so that they look different. And that's why my buttons and the other objects look different because they're utilizing this sprite sheet. You just have to make sure that you add it to your content directory over here, and then make sure that the copy to output directory is set to either copy always or copy if newer. Once you do that, then you need to make sure that you load the file with the from file, save that texture, and set the active style its sprite sheet equal to the texture. That's it. So I went ahead and I just pulled in the colors that we had from the previous example on changing style. And so we can see that now this active style has not just a new image, so the new background, but it also has the colors and the darkening changes all applied to the style, all being used by all the controls below it. And I didn't have to worry about the different states that exist for a button or the states that exist for the slider, or the checkbox, all of that functionality is baked in now with version three. All right, and now the last part, fonts, I'm actually not gonna cover because it has not changed. Please look at my previous video, I'll give a link to that. This next part's not gonna be any sort of demos, or at least not too much. It's mainly going to be a kind of a history, what changed, why it changed, how to convert your project. First, why was version 3 created? Community feedback. That was the biggest reason. There was confusion about how to change colors and how to do the styling, um, all the different states that exist on the different forms, controls, objects, like a button or a text box, all those different states that exist um, created a complex scenario where trying to just simply tint your button or change the button's background was pretty complex. And to alleviate a lot of those concerns, or at least hopefully reduce them, um, Vic and I have built this version three controls, and this version three will hopefully usher in an easier era of modifying your gum code. Each of the components that you have in gum, they can have different categories, and each one of those categories can have different states. And each state is a different set of changes that apply to the components and the elements. Next, you might be thinking, how do I convert my project from version two to version three? Well, there really isn't much to that. All you're gonna do is you're gonna change two things. The first is the default visuals will go from V2 to V3. That's in your initialize method. The second change is going to be your using statement. So this goes from default visuals to version three. Now, if you are hard coding anything, like for instance, maybe you're actually hard coding this whole path to the old visuals. If you do that, make sure that you, um, you update that to point at the version three to get all the functionality that exists on the new styling object as well. Other than a few oddities that I'll put in links that are in the November release notes, that's basically it for what you have to do to convert from one to the other. Let's talk about how V2 and V3 differ. One of the things you'll notice is that the list items here have pretty big space on version two, but on version three, there's less spacing. 
And this is to make sure that you have complete control over the spacing so that we are not dictating or defining for you what the spacing between things should be. That should be the main visual difference you notice is just that spacing. I will encourage you to come out to the November um, migrating document that talks about the changes in version three visuals. This goes into all the details that I've covered and more. This is a pretty good overview. For instance, the radio button had something that used to be called inner check because it was copied from the checkbox. And to align this better with what it actually means and the name of the object, it's been renamed from inner check to radio. So if you were using anything that targeted the, the inner check object itself, then you're gonna get a syntax error or a compile error and you'll need to change that to radio as an example. I mentioned it earlier, but there are some color changes that happen. So you have the concrete colors like black, dark gray, gray, light, gray, white, the abstract colors like primary, success, warning. These other ones here are new. So input background, surface variant, icon default, text primary, text muted. And then we also have these ones here that are used to either darken by a certain percentage or to lighten by a certain percentage. In addition to those, there were properties that were added to each of the controls to allow you to control that, that coloring and the styling easier. And so this table, again, this will show you the details on the button has these, or maybe the menu item has these specific exposed properties that you can use to really customize and control what you want these to look like. Get out, take a look at the styling and the styling individual controls. This is where all this information is located in the documentation. We also added some color extensions. These are used to highlight or darken the different controls. You can see here we've got adjust and adjust takes a float. That's all it takes. This is just the way you write an extension method, so don't don't think it takes a color object. Uh, this is just the way that you write it. The way that you would utilize that is you would say, um, you know, just the model game colors, right? Color dot red, and you can say dot to grayscale or dot adjust by a certain percentage, darken it by 50% or lighten it by 50%. You can also utilize these floating point variables that exist if you want to use the standard darken and lighten values that we are also using so that you don't have to just use some magic variables. You can use these instead. They're part of the active style and you can change them. The last thing I'll say is a little example of the differences between V2 and V3. In V2, if you wanted to change a button's color, you had to set multiple different style colors on different states as well. So you would set the primary, the primary light, and the primary dark. And then you'd also have to change the values for the states for enabled and disabled, as I was showing earlier in the video. You no longer have to do all of that crazy complicated stuff if you have the most normal process where you're just going to be tinting the object slightly one color or another color. And so for that, you would use things like the input background color or the surface variant or the primary. And then these are all tinted and styled for you. So go to the documentation to see details about that. That's all I've got. I just wanted to get out a version three update video. I've been a little slow because uh, Vic and I have been working on a game. So check out the Discord. Check out my other videos. Let me know what you think.